Today's episode is brought to you by the folks over at SeatGeek, the best and easiest to use ticket platform out there. They take the confusion out of buying tickets using a 0 to 10 scoring system and a green is good, red is bad color rating system so you and your loved ones get the best deal possible. So whether it's going to see our beloved Red Legs at Great American Ballpark, the Bengals over at Paycor, FC Cincinnati, one of the area college teams, or pretty much anything in between, use promo code RIVERFRONT at checkout and receive $20 off your first order. Click the link in the show notes to download the app and get started. That's Riverfront, one word, for 20 bucks off. Everybody. Yes, sir. What up? What up? See, so you guys, you guys had to say something in the comments. You didn't realize I could get more obnoxious with this. <laughs> you didn't know. Love it. You don't challenge Love Tim it. Daniel. No, you don't. No. You do not. But uh my name is Tim Daniel. His name. His name is Ben Brown. <laughs> His cameras are all yeah crazy and welcome to this week's edition of late night reds where we discuss the 2024 cactus league champion cincinnati reds absolutely, absolutely. mark it down and we're going to talk about two spring training games um we're gonna extremely overreact because we're hmm. so excited about how well they played uh, yeah a million percent actually um ben if you could just uh be patient with me for a second i feel like we should start the show with uh will benson just hitting a bomb Oh man, I would love to see that. Oh, wouldn't you? Oh, look at that Dude, from the YouTube just, viewers, bro! Just insane. I, you know, it's it's very rare I sit down, and which of course the Reds have the least amount of spring training games uh, televised. But of course, I wanted to watch the first one, mm -hmm. and it's very rare I'll sit down and watch a spring training game. From the first pitch to the last pitch, yeah. I usually don't have that much time. Usually, I'm no. running around, but but I watched that one from first pitch to last pitch. One of the more enjoyable things: Will Benson bat flipping in the cactus leaf. <laughs> I mean, just just flipping that thing. I'm like, dude, we're already starting off swaggy. I like it. He's pip walking <laughs> a solo shot in the cactus league. Yes, I love it. Give me all of that. Inject love that into my veins. Yes. I love it. <laughs> yes. We're setting the tone. Absolutely. Game one, Cactus League. Absolutely. I already texted Quincy Wheeler, our good friend over at Guardians Cast, and said, we're coming for the Ohio Cup. Just go oh, ahead yeah. and move it to the other side of good year. Just leave it there. Polish it for us because it's going to yep. stay in there. Absolutely. I don't really. I think they got to quit playing these four game regular seasons. I was going to say, like, I had a game or something like that. Something yeah, it ties like every year now. Every year. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if players actually really care about it or if it's like the in season tournament in the NBA where the only person they cared about it was LeBron James. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, I would say no. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even think they think of it. I think it's game. I, I, you know, I don't think they really care about. I mean, maybe they do. 
Maybe it's bigger, uh, bigger than we think. I doubt it. All right. Well, it looks like Ben is having some network connectivity yeah, problems. Yeah. Are you good? Are we back? You got I me? I think so. Okay. All right. We were having some uh some network connectivity yeah, gotcha. problems there. All right. Perfect. All right. So we got Pat in the chat. What up, Pat? World Series, here we come. That's right. We got Joey Gaditza hanging out. Um, let's go ahead and go over this real quick. So let's talk about the two games. Uh, we're going to start with the uh, the first game. Like we said, the Reds won 4 nothing. Uh, Carson Spires goes two innings, four strikeouts. Will Benson hits a bomb. Tyler Callahan hit a bomb that hit a security guard who was just doing her thing. You know, she's just no, not, not a security guard. I think she was like a. An usher. Oh, yeah, that, that was. Yeah, I think she just, was an usher, dude. I felt really bad about that one, but. Just mind her own, you know, and then a ball hits her. Mind her own business. Yep. Yeah, you know, not even paying attention. She's like, it's Cactus League. I'm just here because, you know, it's beautiful Arizona. Um, and then yep. uh, Ellie De La Cruz has that's an infield single. Do, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. So we got that. Um, obviously really fun. So really nice to see that we get started on a high note there for sure. Uh, and then we have today where the Angels come to Goodyear. And the Reds win nine to four, get 14 hits. Hunter mm -hmm. Green goes an inning in two thirds of four Ks. Brandon Williamson, two innings, got out of a jam. That was really impressive. Yeah. Uh, Luke, Luke Maley hit a bomb. Uh, Stewie Fairchild and Bubba Thompson each go three for three. Mm -hmm. Edward Arroyo goes two for three. Connor Capel hits a bomb, saying, Allow me to introduce myself. Hey, uh, ain't that the truth? So let's just go ahead, Ben. Let's overreact. <laughs> absolutely um i'll say this uh, i only got to see bits and pieces of the game today of course it was not televised yeah so i was only i was going by clips and trying to we keep are. up on the athletic because it goes live um but yeah if i'm going to overreact i'm really happy with the fact that um you know hunter green was able to uh work on things that he's trying to work on still got four strikeouts two walks uh but you know if you read uh, of course, if you read the article after the game, you know, of course, he's talking about he had a 3-2 count. Usually that's a pitch where he throws a split finger or his fastball and he wound up throwing a curve for a walk, which tells me that he's really trying to work on yep. locating that pitch, which is great. That's mm -hmm. what you want. It, it's it's spring training. Um, so, you know, th those things were cool to see. Um, it was really cool to see that it's it's hard. I would think it's hard to be a, a um, in this rotation – and you know you're only going to get one inning, but come out and pitch the way that our guys did. I think I, I felt like our the guys that we've thrown out there the last you know two days uh, have pitched really well. I think mm -hmm. that they've they've came in, they've done the job, they've gotten outs. Uh, we haven't walked a whole bunch of people. Um, you know, I, I think that it's it's been really good um, as far as uh, hitting wise. You know, watching us go through and play two different lineups, which. You know, it, it, which I think is cool because you get the chance to see a yeah. whole bunch of different dudes. But the really cool thing I like to see, and I think this is a lot about spring training, guys were getting good um, quality at bats. Like they were they were stretching counts. They were working counts. They were working pitches, which I think that's all a part of spring training, right? You were trying to see as many pitches mm -hmm. as you can, uh, you know, see what you can do. And and I, I think that a lot of our guys were doing that, you know, and, and a lot of our veteran guys were doing that. Like I saw, you know, Spencer Steer had a couple hits today. Leading um, off. Like, you know, oh, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Which he can do that. I mean, he's mm -hmm. he's that kind of player where you can stick him anywhere and he can and he can hit um wherever. Uh but watching him, watching uh Ellie yesterday battle, um, you know, watching the other guys battle, it, it was really cool to see. Um you know, and, and I think there's a like a little bit of confidence with those guys. I think they know it's, it's their second year. Yeah. Uh, and and the expectations are high, and I think they put those high expectations on themselves, which is cool to see. Yeah, a thousand percent agree. Uh, Friedel had some nice, you know, had some nice moments yesterday. Obviously, uh, the fact mm -hmm. he was the leadoff hitter, obviously, it was really fun. This is what you kind of want, and obviously, look, we know it's two games of Cactus League baseball. Mm -hmm. We understand, but. They have this thing where they're scoring more runs than the other team, and I feel like it's a good strategy. Um, yeah. They're doing the score runs offense. I like that. 
Yeah. Um, you know, that's pretty solid. I think that they have a chance to win if you run the score runs offense. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and they're doing the not giving up many uh, many runs uh, pitching team. So, um, you know, I like that. Uh, feel feel yeah, for, for really a lot. Confident. You'll win a lot of games. Yeah, yeah, it's both strategy. Con. Let's see how it works <laughs> out. Uh, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So, let's kind of go through a few things, uh, just because I do want to kind of talk about this. So, you mentioned Hunter Green, and um, yeah, he did get a walk on the skir- on a curveball, and but like you said. I love that he's using it. I love that he used all four mm-hmm. pitches today. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in spring training, obviously, it's more of uh, how many pitches you get in your first couple outings. So David Bell went and got him after an inning in two thirds. Yeah. Um, but I listened to I listened to Tommy and Cowboy, and everything they were describing made me feel very good about where he's at right now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm not trying to get over, you know, ahead of myself, obviously, like we said, we know like any something we say here is going to be insane because we're going off of very little. Uh, but I, I felt really, really good about uh, what, you know, where he's at at this moment. And then also uh, I want to talk about Carson Spires yesterday. Um, mm-hmm. So Carson Spires kind of showed a potential upside to be uh, what the kids call uh, a dude. Yes. And absolutely. I, I thought he threw the ball really well. Mm-hmm. Um, Tyler Stevenson, how about him behind the deck yesterday? Kind of framing some pitches. I was like, what oh, is yeah. going on here? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He was he was working, working. You know what I mean? So it was that was definitely good to see. I yeah, I'm uh really, really excited about everything right now. And I know obviously a lot of it is just the fact that we're talking about baseball being played. Um Jimber Candelario yesterday made some nice plays at the hot corner. Mm-hmm. Was, yeah, he did. Um, arm at times was a little high. I, I, see, that was my big concern watching that yesterday. And, and you know, I it, you watched him field it. I mean, he did bobble one, but still threw the guy out. Yeah, but and I don't, I don't know. I mean, that that could change. I mean, it could be a spring training thing where he's just not trying to overdo it or not yeah. trying to throw a, a frozen rope, but um. You know, I, I do think he'll be okay over there. I think he'll be all right. Yeah, I do too. Um, Josh Harrison yesterday roped a double into the mm-hmm. corner. I don't know if he's going to make the team by any stretch, but I will say, Uni looks good on him. It does. Even though these it, unis it are does. rough. They, now that part, yeah. I, I mean, I won't, I won't say these are the greatest unis, but um, no, I, I'll say that Josh Harrison looked good. Um, and we talked about this last week. I mean, he's a guy that even if you watched it closely, um, there was a play where uh, uh, who I forget who was playing first, but they came way off the bag to make the play mm-hmm. and had to make a quick play to the pitcher, which, I mean, of course, is a routine play for anybody in, in baseball. But you could see Harrison kind of talking to whoever was playing first, like, hey, man, like, like I was in range to get that ball. Like you stay, stay, I, you know, but, it, but it's just that kind of that leadership thing where you could kind of see him talking to him. Like yeah. it wasn't like he was yelling or anything, but he was just kind of, you know, Hey, like this is, this is something where I can make that play and we could save our pitcher and blah, blah, blah. I don't know what they were talking about, but stuff. you can see that conversation, but it was baseball stuff. I mean, it was, it was, it was good fundamental things um, from a guy that's a veteran who's a former all-star and a guy that could help your roster. Yeah, absolutely. Let me pull up a couple of guys real quick from yesterday. See if I missed anything that I wanted important. Because yes, you know, we're going off of so little right now. Um, mm-hmm. So my guy Jacob heard easy getting to play mm-hmm. two day two days in a row. I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, talking about Tyler Callahan. Um, I think a lot of people were a lot of people upset that Nick Martini was get, was playing first base yesterday. Were people mad about that? I don't. I don't know. I, I don't. Th- I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. Um, how about Brett Kennedy taking the ball for two innings? Yeah, yeah. I was kind of surprised they ran him back out there for this for the second inning, but he did well. Yeah, I mean, he first inning was a little shaky. It was, it was a little shaky, but um, he came back. I mean, he still got he still got three strikeouts in two innings, two solid yeah. innings of work. Yeah, um, and did you know didn't give up a or he gave up two hits, but. Um, still got three strikeouts and worked two solid. So I, I was pretty impressed that he had runners on second and third with mm-hmm. an out and got out of it. And got out of it. Yep. Not that I'm like Brett Kennedy should break camp with the big league team by any means. So no, please, no, you know, no, there's no, a lot no. of guys above him. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. But it, it does show that that um 
what's it called? I guess just that perseverance of being able to be in it. Because, listen, these guys are still fighting for spots. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it ain't like he's going out there and like, hey, you know, and I think about that a lot of times where, where guys are up the bat. It's it's hard to go out there and not think of that pressure of, I'm trying to break camp with the big league rush. Now, granted, we, we know that's probably not going to happen. Right. But, I mean, he's still putting on a on an addition to be able to say, hey, you can use me in certain situations if you need me, even though it's the first game of spring training. Every spring training game is an audition for those guys. So for him to get in that situation to be able to work his way out of it, I mean, it's a good sign. Should we watch Phil Benson's home run again? Absolutely. Okay, let's watch it again, guys. Boom! Mm. Oh! With the, with a pimp flip. With a pimp flip? Mm. Tank. Yes, tank. indeed. Yes, I mean, indeed. I'll, I'll, I'll play it all day. I don't care. <laughs> I'll, I'll watch it all day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's look a, bit, a little bit at today. I'm going to just say one thing before we get into a fold of the conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, Stuart Fairchild read the tweets, people. He kept receipts. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, he did. He said, oh. Yes, he did. Oh, you guys don't think I'm good enough? I'll show you. You'll see. And yeah, he, he definitely did. Three for three, two stolen bases, a double, a couple runs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, like you mentioned, obviously those guys are all batting for a spot. Him, Bubba Thompson, who also. Who also played. Hit, he also had three hits today. Yeah. I mean, um, Barrero was, you know, Barrero had that really nice play at the plate where he mm-hmm. like got her, got around the tag. That was impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you at Reds, whoever, whoever the admin was that posted that for, for the non, since we couldn't have it on TV. I yeah, said it was you. swimming, showed him swimming. I liked it. Yeah. I liked the clip that they should have Luke Maley's home run where they're like, would you like to see evidence of a hard hit baseball? Yes. <laughs> so, that was shout out, Red, Yeah. Shout out Red's Twitter, man. Yeah. Uh, like for posting that stuff, especially when they don't televise our games. Yeah. Thank you, admin. I appreciate it. Um, just fun stuff, man. Uh, stuff mm-hmm. that you feel really good about. Uh, yeah. Pat says, bro, made contact with the ball. Hell yeah. <laughs> he does that a lot in AAA. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kylo, I agree with you. I just can't think about Votto. Can't bear the pain. Okay. Did you see the clip of the car wash? Oh, yeah. So did I you did. See, a lot of people were like, what hat was he wearing? But it was a, it was a Redbirds, hat, right? Yeah, yeah Redbirds. Red yeah, it was people. Like, there were people actually thought he was wearing a St. Louis Cardinals hat for a minute. Oh, come on now. Yeah, come on now. Come on now. Never. <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. We did not. Never. We did not allow that. Um, no, but we talked about that though, and, it, and not the not the deep dive in Nevada, but like it does still. A little, it surprises me a little bit that somebody at least didn't invite him to camp. Like, yeah. I get you know take a flyer on him. I mean, and. and if, if you invite him to camp, if it doesn't work out, then it just doesn't work out. I mean, right. I, I get it, but, like, I, I would think that a guy that that is, um, I guess, that talented couldn't, you know, give you an opportunity to at least give you – at least for you to give him an opportunity to show what he can still do. Agreed. Um, you know, now, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how that works, and I, and I don't know um, if there's still an opportunity for him to be invited somewhere, but – um, or if there's some kind of veteran thing where it, they can invite him in after the season starts. I don't, I don't know how that works. I don't, I'm not really sure. But it does kind of shock me that he's not in camp somewhere. Agreed. Um, I think that it, the day will come. He'll, he'll I, I do, too. I, yeah. I mean, I do, too. I think that at some point somebody's going to bring him into DH or, or do whatever. I swear, I think I've seen every single fan base on Twitter be like, we should sign Joey Votto. We should sign. Mm-hmm. By the way. I put it back on my phone. You know, it's a new season. Want to be able to interact with everybody. <laughs> and the first day I have it on my phone, of course, it's like I get on at the worst time because I guess someone from some other podcast said some stuff. Not about us, but it's, it was like a whole all out war. And I was like, what? I, I made a grave mistake. See, all you get, see, all you have to do is get on and then talk to your mentions and then say, tweet what you want to tweet and then get off. Yep. Like, that's what I do. Like I don't, yep. I don't linger on X. Never, because then it's like, oh my gosh, like this is just a toxic place. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, not every comment section could be late night reds. You know, no, every Sunday night we get the best people who come in here yeah. and hang out with us. Yeah, and they that's interact incredible. with us. We have a lot of fun. 
Mm-hmm. They make us laugh through the show. They give great insight to their to their opinions on the team. And great we're questions. very, yeah, great questions. So we're very grateful for all of this. I just want all of you guys to know, I look forward to every Sunday night because it takes care of my Sunday scaries. Yep. Um, so, you know, it's my last, it's my, it's my closing with my weekend for going to work tomorrow. Absolutely. So this has been, this is great. And I just want to say, I appreciate y'all. Um, <laughs> do you see, you know, we were talking about how this team kind of has that, like that feeling, that excitement. A couple mm-hmm. things I want to touch on. Um, TJ Anton threw an ending today. Did yep. give up a run, but threw three strikeouts. Mm-hmm. Had a had a normal off season. Mm-hmm. Um, and you heard Cowboy talk about it on the radio. He goes like, he's like, man, and we all know this. this is, he's not saying anything we don't already know. But he goes, TJ Anton's healthy. That's an awful nice weapon for the Red Legs and. You know, in the what two seasons we've had him be healthy in well, season and a month, I guess we should say. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, we've seen this, so looked like you know, the regular TJ Anton that we're familiar with from what I read again, game wasn't on TV, read and listened right. to on the on the on their broadcast. Sound like uh mm-hmm. TJ was doing his thing, so um that's got me hyped. Yeah, from what yeah, from what I read, it, it seems like he uh, came out and looked almost like himself. You know what I mean? And 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 uh, was locating pitch as well. I mean, he did give up a hit and a run, but um, but to have him healthy is definitely a weapon. Uh, and being able to have him uh, come in in situations uh, as a reliever with the stuff that he has, man, which is electric. I mean, he has electric stuff. Yeah. Um, so if he's healthy and is able to give us what we know he's able to give us. I mean, that's just, that's just another feather in our cap as far as being able to strengthen our bullpen. You can see it. It's electric. It's woogie, woogie, woogie. <laughs> Don't that's think not, too much of that. That's well, the only know. words I know. <laughs> I danced to it at every Ooh. wedding. But... Ooh, it's shocking. <laughs> it's electric. Oh, yeah. Then there's, then there's some real words. It's, woogie, woogie, woogie. Yeah. I, I, they lose me at that one. Yeah. It's like, all, knows, I, all I know is I'm turning. You yeah. Know right. I mean? I'm just here, all, you know. We just got this going. All right. Well, yep. <laughs> you know, I'm white, so mine looks a little worse than yours does. So, you know. <laughs> it's like, what's that Gloria Stefan song that was really big that, like, you just, it has like that huge thing at the beginning the, the rhythm is going to get you song and you're like oh yeah I, I don't know what you're saying but i like the song oh yeah yeah yep. yeah that one uh we're getting way too far off track here <laughs> it's all right we're, yeah. we're good <laughs> you know what brings me back when i get off track and we'll, i'm only gonna play one more time but will benson home runs yes absolutely oh my gosh oh man just Bro. crushed all right absolutely crushed let's say my first insane thing of the, the of, of games being played how about a tall center fielder wearing number 30 hitting bombs for the Reds? Hey, mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. Left-handed. Left-handed? As well. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, I like it. All yeah. right, I, I guess we should talk about other things going on in non-game stuff. And yep. uh, I'm going to bring up a couple quotes here from uh, Mark Sheldon. But there's been a lot of stuff coming out about the two younger pitchers everyone's excited about and Rhett Louder and Chase Petty, where have been some reports mm-hmm. about how they've been throwing the ball. And I, uh, Mark Sheldon has some really good quotes about it, so I want to make sure I got to them. And first thing about Louder, uh, Spencer Steer was talking to him, and he said, uh, I think all the guys who faced him out there were pretty impressed with it. Said Spencer Steer about it. He's really good fastball. It's got late movement. It's firm. I didn't see every pitch he's got, just the fastball and change up. But you could tell he's a pitcher. He was putting the ball where he wanted it. It was really impressive. So you and I have made friends in the past with uh, former big league scouts. Mm-hmm. Um, one was on the show recently, so it's he's not my source here. Um, but I, I talked to a couple people mm-hmm. in the biz. That's what we call it, the biz. That's what, that's what we call it. Uh-huh. <laughs> And um, there were some people out there who said that they felt like Rhett Louder might end up being better than Paul Skeens. I am not saying it, okay? I don't know the difference, but they said Whoa. they said Rhett Louder is a pitcher. Paul Skeens is a thrower. Hot takes. Okay. Shots fired. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. And um, Sheldon did confirm. Looks like Louder is actually going to start in double A this year. Yeah. Holy yeah. crap. How? That's insane. 
That How good insane. are you if your first start in professional baseball is in Double A? Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. That that's that's truly insane. That's so impressive. Yeah, that I mean, uh, uh, I mean, all the stuff we've, all the things that we've heard about him, um, I I mean, and Sheldon confirms it. I mean, it, it's just he's different. You know what I mean? Like he's he's different. Like he's a guy that. Um, you know, with given the opportunity, learning how to to pitch to major league pitching, um, could be a stud for years to come, right? I mean, mm-hmm. he's got he has all he has all the things that he needs. He's he's a pitcher's pitcher, right? He he's able to locate pitches. He's able to uh, work different pitches. He's got a, a change a change up, a fastball. I, I believe his his third pitch is may, maybe a curve or a slider, maybe. Um, but he's got he's got three or four different pitches um and he's a pitcher's pitcher right he can locate pitches um he's able to uh be where he wants to be in the zone so uh, to start off in double a uh, i mean that's that kind of gives you everything that you need to know about his skill set and what the reds organization thinks about him i mean that's yeah. that's pretty incredible it is because he did, you know, he was part of Jayton last year, but he had hit his innings limit from Wake Forest making that run. Yeah. And so he didn't pitch for them. Um, and then that same article when he talks about uh, Chase Petty, he got quotes from David Bell. And sorry, I know it's not very professional to use my phone here. Uh, I just want to make sure I got all my quotes. So he said, mm-hmm. um, they looked great, Bell said. You try not to put too much weight on anything, but you could definitely see the talent. Petty looked like he was locked in the game and so was Red, but you could see the maturity to how they were handling live BP. They weren't trying to overthrow anything. Their talent was just shining through the day. Um, obviously, and then let's see, was there anything else in there? So I think when the Reds traded Sonny Gray in 21, 20, is that right? 22, mm, 22, uh, 22. Yeah, 22. 22, yeah. Um, when they got Chase Petty, it was kind of like, oh, okay. So who's this guy? If you, for those who don't know, and then you looked up the numbers, like, oh, top ten pick, you're like, that's nice. You look mm-hmm. at the, you look at the, uh, the you look at the, uh, this, the numbers, you go, oh, this is pretty great. And so, the, obviously, none of us expect these guys going to be breaking big league camp by any stretch. Uh, right. But pretty nice to see what else is coming up. Uh, these two spires, you know, those guys like that um, make things a lot of fun. I think Ty Floyd, a lot of people are kind of saying they suspect the kid they got with the comp pick from LSU. They mm-hmm. kind of suspect to be a bullpen guy. Um, he's pretty electric too. Boogie, woogie, woogie. And uh, <laughs> so this is going to be, this is really nice. Obviously, this is what you kind of want to read in spring training is all yeah. about all these guys. We didn't really talk enough about Edwin Arroyo. Um, yeah. Really impressed through, very, you know, obviously – Put in the context that I know what it is, but really impressed, obviously, with what we as we saw from him through the first two games and what he's supposed to be and things like that. Um, I don't mean to circle back to the games. I was trying to move to the next no. segment, but wanted to no, make no, sure no, we absolutely. gave him his flowers because uh, the play that he made today that was described in the radio broadcast was sounded like it was really awesome. Um, yeah. It just would have been cool if we could like watch, watch it. it, you know. <laughs> That'd be neat. <laughs> that would that would be neat. I mean, know? we could do the thing we do in minor league games, where it's just someone has a GoPro in center field, and I'm gonna live with that. I would, li- yeah, I would take that. Yeah, I would take that all day, just to have the option to watch it. I mean, right. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. They're on TV tomorrow, so one of the yes. games. Yeah. All right. Let's go here to. Um, some some signing news that God forbid if they break camp with these two guys, we got problems. Um, the Reds did bring in Tony Kemp and Mike Ford uh, to kind of be part of the team. I like Tony Kemp's quotes when he said that um, it's like this is a team that's compete for divisions and championships. Of course, you want to be a part of it. That's great, Tony, but I wouldn't get comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, Mike Ford maybe has a chance to be there. You know, if they go, if they're willing to go to Louisville or whatever, sure. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know, I'm I'm not seeing it, player. Yeah, not I'm, I'm it. not seeing it. No, not at all. 
it's it's not ideal. It's not ideal. But you know, nice camp bodies to have to go along with the Josh Harrisons of the world, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, you know, Tony Kemp is a solid, you know, two oh seven last year for Oakland. Mm-hmm. Who doesn't need that? Yeah, I mean, just solid work at the plate. I just really thought when they signed him, I said, you know what the Reds really need? Wilson Valdez, too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you're spot on with that one. I do my best, you know? I do my best. You're spot on. Yeah. Um. Which? Oh, okay. I totally split, so I remember what I wanted to tell you. So there was an article that came out this afternoon. It was on Sustay.com. I think it was Charlie. Again, I really only quote Charlie. I don't quote the other mm-hmm. guy. And did you see this? So the mm-hmm. guys, the guys were asked about Cody Bellinger signing back with the Cubs. And they said I didn't see it. Uh-uh. Yeah. This is this is this is we talked about they're getting swagtastic to start spring training. Uh-huh. They said, Cool, we'll beat him with Cody Bellinger. Oh wow. Oh, I'm in. I'm, I'm in. in on that. Yeah. yeah. That's like straight, like yeah. Oh yeah, this is where the big that. boys play. <laughs> I Full like that. For life, yeah. <laughs> it was. I was pretty impressed that. Uh, yeah, I like that. I feel like this team just day one just came in there and was like, "All right, we're the guys." Like, oh yeah, bring it. Yeah, and I like it. Oh no doubt. I I think that that's the. Um... And we talked about this all off season, right? I mean, that's the that's the attitude, that's the swag, that's the youth, that's the, you know, we were able to hang, you know, with all different kind of lineups and all different kinds of people coming in and out and injuries, and we were still two games away from being in the playoffs, and we were just getting our feet wet. I mean, we our guys are still wet behind the ears, bro. I mean, they they were trying to learn and on the fly, and and yeah, now they now they got that year under their belt, and it's it's uh it's scary. I mean, it's scary because they they if they play with the confidence that we they know they can play with. I'm telling you, it's it's going to be scary eyes for a lot of people. Yeah, I agree. Um, what do you think about it, the Bellinger thing? So it's three years, eighty mil. I don't really have an issue with the money or anything mm-hmm. like that. I'm not, you know obviously I don't care about contracts anyway. Um, mm-hmm. But I did kind of think it was weird. It took us this long. To mm-hmm. get to the thing we already knew was going to happen. Yeah, I yeah, that's I think that's the thing that got me the most is the delay. Yeah, like what's the hold up? It, yeah, like I, I I mean maybe it was it maybe they were trying to get to a number in a year that where they both felt comfortable, you know, because that's usually the that's usually where things fall short. So, you know, Cody Bellinger and his agent, his people think you know maybe they wanted. You know, maybe they wanted five years and the Cubs wanted two. So they've settled on three and then they had to get to, you know, had to get to a nice place number wise. So, I, I, I mean, you never know what's the hold up on that. I mean, contracts and money and, and disputes and agents and all that mumbo jumbo It all. I mean, eventually they got to where they wanted to be, but it probably took it probably took them a little bit. They both know they wanted to be together. Um, it's just figuring out the the right number and the right amount of years. Yeah, um, I'm kind of you know I'm hoping he's more of that post MVP pre Cubs Cody Bellinger instead of you know the guy who was really awesome last year. That would be great if you could just yeah. go back to the <laughs> shell of yourself. Yeah, <laughs> you could just go back to the shell of yourself. That you Let's were. hope all that money changes you for the worse. Yeah. Uh, and you, I mean, it's not like the know. Cubs ever give out bad contracts ever. Right. <laughs> let's hope that money changes you. Hope, let's hope you have a really good time with all that money in Chicago and you really enjoy the Chicago nightlife and baseball becomes secondary. Yeah. But if that were, we're at spring or like a week into spring training. How is it that we're just still kind of just overlooking the fact that Craig Council was just randomly hired one day and David Ross was like, wait, what? It's like, I'm out. <laughs> that that was the absolute strangest thing. Because because here I picture it, like I can picture them hiring hiring him and being like, oh, yeah, we forgot to tell Ross he's out. And Ross is just at home watching ESPN seeing that they hired a different coach. He's like, hold on one second. Then his phone rings. He's like, I don't want to answer that. <laughs> like, what, 
No. <laughs> HR wants to see you today, David. Yeah, HR wants to see you today. Please bring your uh, iPad. Um, uh, yeah, that's that was crazy. That was. I remember. I, I remember. I texted you. I was like, "Don't they have a coach?" <laughs> yeah. like, There's no like, no like Rossi's on. Like, great. We're not in Chicago, so right, 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 right. But there was no like Rossi's on the hot seat. Rossi's in no. trouble. Should like, no. should Ross be concerned about his job? It was just like gone. Nothing out. Poor guy. Out. That yeah. was it. Yeah. <sighs> All right. So. Let's go real quick here. Let's talk about some of the injury updates we've got. So, uh, by the way, Ian Jabot's hurt. Oh, didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know uh, that was either. Yeah, so this is all from Charlie's Twitter account. So, looks like uh, he's got a pronator strain, so they don't think it's anything serious. Uh, Matt McLean, they said it's an oblique, said he's doing better, he keeps progressing. I believe they said the goal was him to just miss about a week of spring training games. So, hopefully, yeah. we see him next week. Um, Jonathan India should be out till March 7th or 8th. Saw that he was uh, shaking some fly balls out there. So I did see that. I did yeah. see that. So that's a good sign. That is a good sign. There'll be Marte should be back next week, and then uh, Nick Lodolo. They're saying is getting ready to throw a little BP. Mm, that's promising. That's promising. You like the sound of that? Yeah, uh, I like that. Yeah, I. Uh, that's this. Are, that's all reassuring. There's no like doomsday on the injury report. So. Mm-mm. The only one that, honestly, the only one that really concerns me, and it really doesn't concern me, but it's Matt McClain, um, just because that's the oblique was where he had an issue last year. I think it was the um, second. So, it was the opposite one they said this time. So oh, uh, it was the opposite one. Yeah. Okay. Because the first report I heard it was the same same one. But Maybe I'm wrong. Opposite, no, no, no. But I mean, it could be the opposite one. Uh, but it like. You know, that's the only thing that really concerns me because, I mean, that's just one swing of the bat or one, you know what I mean, and you could tweak it again or whatever the case may be. But hopefully um, he, you know, not really, I mean, not that they don't, I mean, invest millions of dollars into their bodies, but uh, hopefully that he's able to uh, get that kind of healed up before they try to rush him back. I mean, I know he needs spring training at bats and work, but we also need him healthy for 160 games, so. I don't know if Matt McLean needs spring training. I think he, uh, he just wakes up and he's like, all right, I'm set. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. He like, he goes to the machine. They're like, what's, he's like, what's the mileage on that? Uh, 75, put it at 115. Let's roll. Right. Let's roll. (laughs) Breaks the machine with how fast it goes. He just is getting hits, you know? Yep. That's all I view by Matt McLean. This is what I do. Yeah, <laughs> Pat Begrich did too many lat pull downs. I've oof, I've had the lat pull injury. It sucks. It's like yeah. one of the worst gym injuries. That one, and when I hurt my like I hurt with my back deadlifting, and I was like, I'm retiring oh. from deadlifting, never again. Yeah, I I, I haven't yeah I, haven't I did it again, but college. yeah yeah I I don't deadlift. I'm an idiot. I, I don't know any that. better. So <laughs> yeah, that's typical Tim. Um. <laughs> All right, let's look ahead to what we got this week in the game. So, like we said, the Reds are on TV tomorrow for one of their split squad games against the Seattle Mariners. Um, we're going to see Andrew Abbott versus Luis Castillo, which, like, if that was a real game, would be incredible. Um, be but still going to be just as fun seeing those two, these two guys go a couple innings. Um, obviously, I'll cry when I watch Luis Castillo take the mound yeah. in good in good year. Um, mm-hmm. And just wonder if he thinks about us the way we think about him. <laughs> Best, maybe you know, top two Reds pitcher of my lifetime, for yeah, sure. Yeah, he he was incredible. Yeah, he so incredible. Uh, then the Reds on the other end, they'll be playing the Brewers. Nick Martinez against Bryce Wilson. Mm-hmm. And tomorrow, I mean, well, Tuesday, you've got Frankie Montas against Kyle Hendricks. If oh. there's anyone in the world that's happy, Joey Votto is not back in Cincinnati. It's Kyle Hendricks. It's Kyle, yeah, you ain't yeah, right. right. Uh, he's probably he's the one guy that's like, oh great, he's not there anymore. I might get through an inning. <laughs> uh, but uh, so we got that though going on, and then they're off Wednesday, so Thursday the Dodgers, Friday Arizona, Saturday the Rockies, and Sunday the Royals. Um, so that's what to look forward to this week. Starters have not been announced for anything past Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, I forgot Patrick. That's right. I forgot that like Hendricks also hated Arcees Aquino. Like he could yes, not he get did. him out either. <laughs> Joey Votto, Arcees Aquino. Aquino, I know. <laughs> I guess I guess Arcees Aquino, August 2019 is here. Oh, that was great. Like... Yeah, yeah. Yep. In August, same thing. 
same energy. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Um, did you look? So yesterday, I know. Did you look at any of the box scores? Did you see the Yankees' first day of spring training? They scored twenty-two runs. Yeah, I, I did, and and I so I I flipped on MLB tonight, and of course they're just kind of run through them, and all I kept thinking about is freaking. Aaron Judge and Juan Soto are in the same flipping lineup. And that's all I, I know. And I, I know, as I watch Juan Soto hit a freaking bomb, and I'm like, you've got to be – like, how fair is this? Like, right. you have two of the best hitters in all of baseball just right next to each other just hitting bombs. Like, it, yeah. So, uh, that's that's going to be scary, dude. They, I mean, because Juan Soto is only going to get better in that lineup because you can't avoid him. You can't. No, you can't avoid anybody in that lineup, which is which is insane. I just think so, like if on the other end, if you're the Tigers, yeah, that'll be that'll be a one one year lineup to watch if they can stay healthy. Yeah, they really will. I agree. Um, I was thinking on the other end, if you're the Tigers, you're like, oh man, it's first spring training game. I'm so excited to get started. We got the you know we got the Yankees. Let's just show up to the ballpark and see what happens. Twenty two runs. Yeah. Well, try again tomorrow. <laughs> Try again tomorrow. Well, it, good thing it's good thing it's free training. Yeah. <sighs> oh, like, how many oh, more of these we got? Yeah. Oh, we played till the we right. played till the first week of October. Okay. Oh, all right. Great. This is awesome. <laughs> how many times we play them again? All right. <laughs> well, we're in the same awesome. league. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get up. Oh my gosh. Poor guys. Um yeah. that was the only other thing I really paid attention to, but I thought that was kind of funny. Um mm -hmm. yeah, so we got that. Uh the pirates signed Mix Keller to an extension. Which my question was, why, Mitch? Yeah, I missed that one. Yeah. I mean, I get why, but also why. Yeah. Yeah. Five years, I think 77 mil. So really? Yeah, I mean he's he's legit. But I mean like, he's legit, but like why? Yeah, I don't know. Like, you, you want to be a pirate for five more years? Yeah. With your stealing? Right. Like, I, I mean, I guess. I mean, yeah. Money's money, I guess. <laughs> you know. There's an article in the Athletic this week about the pirates, and I was like, why they're okay being mediocre forever? And I was like, you're just, just give me ammunition, like yeah. Yeah. you got. You guys are just basking me to make fun of you. <laughs> uh, dwelling in mediocrity. And yeah. we're okay with it. Absolutely. Um, well, hey, before we get out of here, let's go ahead and shout out what else is going on around the riverfront. Uh, ben, I don't know if you caught Seth's show this week, Red, Red Leg Roundtable, had Hal McCoy on. It was so good. The storytelling, oh, wow. incredible. Was yeah. was so, so good. Yeah, Hal McCoy is an absolute legend. I mean, if you've if you've heard him, like if you've seen shows with him on it and him telling shows and stories, and dude, he's just inc I mean, he's just such a wealth of knowledge and just, I mean, he's just had vivid memories of almost every big moment in Reds history. It's just incredible. Yeah, he talked. There's a lot of cool stuff. I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't listened. To right, that. right, yeah. But for those who have, it's it's really really good. So Seth's doing awesome work over there. He's got Adam Rosales coming up. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, sweet, Mr. Race Around the Base Path. Race Adam around Rizal. the bases, yeah, yeah. Dude, that, dude. yeah. He was awesome, he was so fun. Mm -hmm. Your prototypical Cincinnati fan favorite player, but yes, he was, yeah, the Tracy so, Jones of our era, <laughs> right? The Tracy Jones of our era, that's a great way to put it. <laughs> um, and obviously, of course, every Friday, you got Chad and Nate holding it down with the Riverfront Red Show. Um, had another really, really fun episode this week talking about everything going on, so be sure to be tuning into all of them. Um, and yeah, so I think that will go ahead and wrap up this week's edition of late night reds here on the riverfront media network. Uh, Hey guys, thank you so much. Um, as you know, like I said already, love this every Sunday. Have so much fun. Love you guys. The chat was hot tonight. Doug. Yes. Yeah. Um, a lot of fun, a lot of enjoyment. So, and we've got to do this forever because oh, absolutely. we don't have, we don't have a week without a baseball game till, uh, second week of October. Let's go. Who am I kidding? It's the Reds. We're 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 playing until after Halloween. We're playing until after Halloween, baby. What are you talking yeah, about? Right. We're gonna be all partying together in Fountain Square. Heck yeah. And we're gonna have a great time. So uh 
thank you guys as always. Be sure to, if you haven't already and you're just checking us out, be sure to give us that nice solid subscription button on YouTube. Leave some comments about, um, I don't know, how un unfunny and unoriginal I am. I accept all this. <laughs> um, uh, or you can talk you, about how Ben's the nicest human being alive. That's fair too. Uh, you know. You know, we'll take this. We'll take this. Yeah. We'll take this. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and have a have a great time. We'll be back next week to talk about all the cool things that happened this week. Hopefully all good news next week as well. Uh, so thank you guys. Have a good one. We'll see you next week.